Hello, it's Friday the 28th of October and welcome to this week's news bulletin from the Christian Institute. A Christian employee of a housing association in Manchester is taking his employer to court after he was demoted for posting comments about same-sex civil partnerships in churches on Facebook. Adrian Smith wrote the comment inequality too far outside work time on his private Facebook page that was not visible to the general public. But his bosses at Trafford Housing Trust said it damaged the trust's reputation and amounted to gross misconduct. They slashed his salary by 40%. The trust decision to demote and cut Mr Smith's salary has been roundly criticised as excessive and disproportionate. The Christian Institute is supporting Mr Smith with his legal action. To call this gross misconduct, which is usually reserved for activities such as being caught stealing from your employer, I just think is way over the top. I think very heavy-handed. Um, he can't be punished just for his beliefs. Newspaper commentators have also been quick to criticise the treatment of Adrian Smith. Ali Fogg, writing on The Guardian's website, said of the Trafford Housing Trust, If the Trust was concerned about its reputation for inclusiveness and tolerance, it couldn't have got things more badly wrong. A comment piece in the Mail on Sunday said, The sinister process by which he has been denounced and then impoverished is deeply disturbing. His beliefs have nothing to do with his performance of his duties. And homosexual activist Peter Tatchell has said that whilst he does not agree with Mr Smith's opinions, he defends his freedom of speech, saying, Mr Smith voiced his opinion in a calm, non-abusive manner. He was not threatening or intimidating. The case has been raised in Parliament and referred to the Minister for Housing, Grant Shapps. Following the launch of a government consultation on public order policing, Liberal Democrat MP Julian Huppert has renewed a call to improve Section 5 of the Public Order Act by removing the word insulting. Mr Huppert referred to the case of Ben and Sharon Vogelenzang, a Christian couple who were prosecuted under Section 5, after a female Muslim guest complained that she'd been offended by the couple's comments at their hotel. Organisations, including the National Secular Society, Liberty and the Christian Institute, support such a change. Mr Huppert said... The current law encroaches on the fundamental right to free speech, is being used to prosecute those whom it was designed to protect, and it is fundamentally illiberal. Fresh warnings have been sounded over the proposed redefinition of marriage in Scotland. Mario Conti, the Roman Catholic Archbishop of Glasgow, has again spoken out, warning that the Scottish government risks making the beliefs of many Scots unlawful if it redefines marriage. He also said that those who oppose change would be vulnerable to accusations of discrimination and in danger in some circumstances of losing their jobs. We need to support marriage and not further unsettle its traditional place in our land. And to Tom Farmer, the millionaire founder of QuickFit and a Scottish National Party donor, has criticised the SNP's plans to redefine marriage. He said that the government had alienated itself from large parts of the population in Scotland. So Tom added that marriage is for the creation of children and the family life. He also cautioned that this was the first step to trying to force the churches to do things which are totally against their whole beliefs. In Westminster, Conservative MP Andrea Leadsom has suggested that sex education resources should be vetted to ensure that children as young as five are protected from inappropriate content. Mrs Leadsom said that some parents in her constituency were horrified to discover what their kids had been taught. Meanwhile, in the House of Lords, an attempt to pressurise primary schools to teach sex education was withdrawn. And in a separate debate, a vote to change the law on Christian assemblies in schools was abandoned due to a lack of support. Lord Avebury, a Lib Dem peer and an honorary associate of the National Secular Society, tabled an amendment to the Education Bill. He wanted to remove the requirement for collective worship at all schools, apart from faith schools. Currently, schools must have a daily act of collective worship, which must be wholly or mainly of a broadly Christian character. Independent MSP Margot MacDonald has relaunched her controversial campaign to legalise assisted suicide in Scotland, even though her previous attempt was soundly defeated. Ms MacDonald tried to pass similar legislation last year and now has submitted a proposed consultation document for a simplified piece of legislation called the Assisted Suicide Scotland Bill. Last year, Ms MacDonald faced widespread criticism from medics, disability groups, politicians 
and faith groups. A survey carried out earlier this year by disability charity Scope revealed that 70% of those with a disability felt that a change in the law would create pressure for disabled people to end their lives prematurely. Ms McDonald said, This is a much simplified bill. We've learned lessons from last time. It is about the rights of people seeking this assistance, a right to ask, not demand. And finally, a service to commemorate 150 years of the Grace Baptist Mission will be broadcast on BBC Radio 4 this Sunday. Speaking at the Thanksgiving Day will be preacher Don Carson. Radio 4's Sunday worship programme, which will be broadcast at 10 past 8 in the morning, will feature Grace Baptist Mission's Grace to Nation service from Solihull. Well, that's all for this week. For more information and regular updates on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.